Welcome to Liberate Your Life podcast, where we explore the art of holistic healing and personal transformation through Ayurveda and somatic practices. I'm your host, Melinda Fletcher, founder of Sattva Wellness Center, Ayurvedic practitioner, and somatic therapist. I'm here to guide you on a journey to harmonize your body, mind, and soul. Whether you're seeking emotional well-being, trauma recovery, or spiritual growth, this is your space to find balance and liberate your life. Welcome to Liberate Your Life podcast, where we explore the pathways to true freedom and inner peace. I'm your host, Melinda Fletcher, and today we dive into the magic of taking the high road. Join me as we consciously elevate our experiences, challenges, and everyday moments to higher states of awareness and consciousness. Let's explore how allowing grace to come through even in the hardest moments can transform our lives. Stay tuned for insights, stories, and practical tips to help you embrace a higher perspective and liberate your life. Let's dive into episode 43, Elevating Your Journey, The Magic of Taking the High Road. So I want to begin here with the definition of taking the high road. Taking the high road refers to the conscious decision to respond to challenges, conflicts, and difficult situations with grace, integrity, and higher level of awareness. It involves choosing positivity, compassion, and understanding over negativity, resentment, and retaliation. This choice is not about denying or avoiding difficulties, but about approaching them from a place of inner strength and wisdom. Consciously elevating our experiences means mindful, being mindful of our reactions and intentionally choosing to rise above the immediate emotions and impulses that difficult situations often trigger. By doing so, we transform our experiences into opportunities for growth and learning. This practice encourages us to view challenges as catalysts for personal and spiritual development rather than as obstacles to be feared or avoided. It allows us to see the bigger picture and recognize the interconnectedness of our experiences with our overall journey. Taking the high road has a profound impact on our personal growth and spiritual development. When we choose to elevate our responses, we cultivate qualities such as patience, empathy, and resilience. These attributes not only enhance our interactions with others, but also deepen our understanding of ourselves. By consistently choosing the high road, we build a foundation of trust and respect, both for ourselves and on our relationships with others. On a spiritual level, taking the high road aligns us with the higher states of consciousness. It helps us transcend the ego's need for control and validation, allowing us to connect with our true essence. This connection fosters a sense of inner peace and fulfillment as we begin to live in harmony with our highest values and aspirations. Okay, so let's dive into all of that beautiful verbiage even more in a more free form. So taking the high road, really there's a deep level of radical self-acceptance and radical self-love and like radical spaciousness. So radical responsibility. So when we shame and blame the outside world and we blame them for our challenges, there's a moment where we can really shift that and not be the victim and really take radical responsibility for our actions. Because most often our ego is trying to cover up our vulnerabilities, our insecurities, the fact that we're not perfect and the fact that we're messy or we didn't do something the right way or we said the wrong thing or um, yeah. So when we can really take this radical responsibility for our part in it, it helps to elevate us and to, it, it, it like speeds up the process around to allow like the healing acceptance and the release of an experience. But when we really fester and ruminate on the, they did this or he did this or she did this or the external world always does this or they're to blame, then it disempowers our own capacity to rise up 
and to transcend the experience and take it into the level of healing, blessings, and transformation. So radical responsibility, radical acceptance. And then the other thing is like radical self-love. So radical self-love is, is underlined with this like really deep quality of like compassion and resilience. So we have so much like compassion and understanding of our human journey um, within the context of these challenging moments along our path. So when we can really soften with ourselves um, because we all have experienced that we are our worst critic. So we will beat up ourselves and be so hard on ourselves and say really mean things to ourselves. And then that creates this contracted space and it doesn't allow for this like fluid pranic grace to come through and really infuse our system with the release of a challenging experience so that it can really transform us and and just elevate our our consciousness about being human and really sitting in the seat of being humble being humble about being human and um again the ego is going to really try to protect and um, really solidify that armor around no nobody's ever going to see that i am the way i am because um, it was too vulnerable at one time and place. And so we really kind of tucked that away. So the, um, the radical responsibility, the radical acceptance, the radical self-love. And when I say radical, like radical, I'm using that word because it's just a really powerful, like being radical. It's like being extreme, like is this impulse of intensity that can come through and really like diffuse, dissipate, like really transform an experience. So it's like, it's not, it's, it's you know, we're human and it's not going to be like, oh, I'm just going to like, it's like, it's, it's not at the level of, of, of just like normalness. It's like radical. Let's be radical. Let's like really step it up a notch or 10 to really just be like, dude, I am going to reprogram my inner thoughts, my inner experiences. I am empowered in the beautiful light and being that I am. And I don't need to interact and respond to the world in the ways that I do, because ultimately who suffers, you suffer, who suffers, I suffer. And I've really felt that in my life. So these radical acts of compassion, love, and kindness, to really transcend and really uh, access the high road, access the higher consciousness and access the higher awareness and really help to get out of the pattern, belief systems, conditioning, and thought. So the other one I mentioned was radical spaciousness. So spaciousness is, um, I like to connect it to the Vata Dosha in Ayurveda. So spaciousness is space. And so it's the, it's the space of pure potentiality. It's the space where everything comes out of, um, it's the space of the formlessness. So radical spaciousness is just this, we can get so like locked into what we're looking at and what that means to us and how the world is through our sensory intake and then how our nervous system and command centers are programmed to have us respond to events. So the spaciousness is, I like to also call it the soul's eye view versus, versus like the bird's eye view, right? So we know the, oh, the bird's eye view or the bird's, you know, but we're going to take it up to the, like the higher realm of like, how can we be our biggest, most beautiful soul level spaciousness to be able to open up our arms fully, which then helps to open up the heart fully and just really see it from that soul's eye vision, that higher space around the experiences and that we don't get too tight around like the individual moments, but we really keep this like higher understanding and higher values and higher knowingness within our heart and within our soul around the 
the the challenges that happen in life and that we really return to source and trust and that level of karmic understanding that there's something so much bigger that's guiding this whole um, journey and that um, when we open ourselves to that spaciousness, to grace, then the magic and the miracles of life uh, flow through. And there's there's this part that I want to bring in now about resistance. So resistance, um, when we think about resistance, it's like when I say a contracted state, that's when we're like contracted and like pulled in ourselves and we're just like so tightly wound and locked around our trauma and our feelings and our pain body and um, what someone else did or what an experience did. And it's like, wow, we can take it in so many directions and build and build and build and build a case against life and a case against somebody and a case against experiences. But that energy has its own frequency and that creates a very aggravated out of balance state within your system. And from there, many different things can manifest uh, in like a dis ease pattern when we're holding that pain and that grief and that resentment and that anger and um so resistance I say this uh what resists will persist um so when we resist what is when we resist allowing ourselves to take the high road that you can even feel like when we go high like when we just relax and be like, okay, that was a hard moment. I can totally just collapse into the egoic movement, into the protection, into the armor, to the I'm right and she's wrong or he's wrong or it's wrong. And wow, it can just go on and on and on. And we can live with that and we can bury it in our tissues and bury it in our tissues. But when we, when we, let go of resistance to what is when we allow the lessons and the blessings to come through when we take radical responsibility and acceptance of our choices when we can recognize what was up for us why did we respond the way we responded why did we choose the words we did what were we protecting in that moment how can we say wow yeah no i definitely it was a mix Yes, there was probably some truth. There was probably some, but there's like, how do we just surrender into being humble and being like, I'm sorry. And what ways can you take radical responsibility in these things uh, that happen, these challenges that we interface? And then how do we open them up into really like transforming our lives, right? So recently I got bit by a dog. I got pretty severely bit. Um, it took me seven weeks to heal. Um, it was very traumatizing and I had to go to the ER and all these things. And it was like, okay, you know, some people would be, choose to be really mad at the owners and really mad at the dogs and really mad at everything. And I was like, you know what? Okay. So here I am walking through life, choosing a sunny spot to sit for lunch. And I got bit. So for me, I was like, okay, well, what do I need to learn from this? Where do I need to wake up? What does doggy bite medicine mean? I, you know, was just, nobody was at fault. Why should I blame somebody? Because that creates like blame and shame and anger and resentment, right? So like, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just like, okay, that was a shitty situation. Okay, why did in that very moment, did all the factors collide to have that happen? And I can't change it. My body's going to heal. And how can I take this to a place of the high road? And how can I let it teach me? What do I need to learn from it? I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to evolve. Um, so it helped me slow down. I had to nourish my body differently. I had to elevate my leg and just sit. I've been doing a lot. I'm a mama. I have a center. I have a lot of energy. I do a lot of projects every day, all day. So my body needed to rest and I needed to slow down and I needed to recalibrate and I needed to see some things that 
I wouldn't have otherwise seen because I was moving fast. And um, so I got to sit and I got to clear out and I got to clean out my headspace and I got to clean out the cobwebs and I got to see more clearly and I got to heal my body. And I don't know everything that my body needed, but it came in that form from the universe and there you have it. So again, like I didn't choose to bottle it up and like be angry at the dog. I was like, okay, let's go inward. How can I take it up a notch? How can I take this up a notch? How can I use this experience to change me? I am changed forever from that experience and I'm holding it in the space of love, light, and grace. So yeah, so taking the high road. So when we talk about the high road, um, and I don't mean this in like a spiritual egotistic way. It's like there's a higher level of understanding and there's a higher frequency of being. And we can easily really get like crunchy and contorted and kind of wrapped up in um, really protecting our pain body through the egoic structure. So creating space around that so that we can go, okay, yes, this is a hard moment. All this came in. And how can I slow down and how can I really support my system to elevate into the higher levels of understanding? Um, and we all know when we're like really aligned and we get those insights and they just feel so good in our heart and we like finally understand a situation from that higher place of wisdom and, and, um, and knowingness. And it feels like, wow, you just like released like layers of weight um, on your body and layers of weight on your soul and, and your heart feels all warm and cozy. So it's really exercising that and using this in many opportunities to, um, to really just transcend a moment so we don't get locked into the shame, the blame, the judgment, the criticism, the resistance, uh, the anger, and, um, and that we really take these opportunities to elevate our own frequency and to hold that space. It's like be the change you wish to see in the world um, by Gandhi. And it's, um, you know, and world peace. It's like world peace. Yes. But like world peace starts with you. So how do you generate world peace within your ecosystem, in your micro in ecosystem, within the macro ecosystem. So remember, we are energy, we are a frequency, and our frequency and our light and our capacity to really like exude positivity really helps to um, inspire others and really uphold that way of living and being and breathing um, within your own being and within the world. So here are some practices to help support you. So mindfulness practices, um, and this is again to create that space so we don't get so wrapped up in the chatter of the mind and the onset of the pain body and nervous system that is going to have us play out old patterns of protection and resistance and shame and blame and anger. So we really want to create space. So how do we create space? Number one, slowing down. Slow down. Slow down is always going to support healing, integration, and deeper understanding. Um, the system needs that organic timing. It needs some slow, intentional regulation so that it can really slow down and really guide the responses of the patterned thoughts, beliefs, and bodily feelings around a situation. So we want to slow down, whether that means taking a slow walk, earthing, just laying on the earth, sitting in meditation, doing some breath work, slowing down, canceling plans, um, doing just some housework is very, can be very meditative. Go gardening, um, just really slowing down, getting good sleep to nourish that uh, nighttime um, integration and transformation that happens when we sleep. So we feel rested when we're not rested, we're depleted and things definitely impact you in different ways. And we are quick to respond from that small self ego protection, uh, infrastructure. So slowing down is always going to be very beneficial. Um, and then I really love to, 
stay as consciously as I can in the awareness of my humble, sweet self and really be connected to spirit, source, God within, God all around, um, that I really don't need to or can't, you know, understand always what's coming together to create experiences and moments in my life. But I'm like, okay, I just, I'm in this like fully devoted, committed experience that it's here to teach me something and it's here to grow me and evolve me as a human. And I've had to practice this. I've had to exercise it. I've had to train this and it still gets the best of me, but I'm way quicker to catch it and to come back around and be like, wow. Okay. Yeah. So how can I see where my own ego or little girl or or sensitivities were create were helping to fuel a situation and how can I diffuse that and how can I go okay so that's a pattern in me let's recognize that let's see if I can catch it um coming up again and how can I respond differently um and then when I have challenging situations um traumatic situations really hard situations I'm, I really do uh, just sit in meditation, in deep prayer, and, um, and just trust, really big, big, big trust um, that there's just such a bigger guidance and that um, I am a humble servant and a humble channel to bring through grace. And um, it's amazing how powerful it is to change the ways in which you feel in your body, the way that your mind responds. Uh, it becomes more quiet in between your ears. And, um, and then there's more joy, more access to joy and more access to awe of like, wow, this, this whole experience is like wildly beautiful and it can be confusing and ridiculous in all the pieces, but um, but when we take the high level and we really are like out of our like contracted grip and control around our experiences and trying to avoid uh, painful things, it's like embracing those challenging moments to let them transform your tissues, your thoughts, your conditioning, really allow them to move through you as you and really radically accept the places and discontinue the blame and shame of others because that will disempower your own capacity to live in the highest frequency and um you know do unto others as you would want others do unto you and uh, really, really stay true to that high, high frequency and that high love vibration that is so needed uh, today and always. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Liberate Your Life podcast. I hope you feel inspired to take the high road and consciously elevate your experiences. Remember, when we allow grace to come through, even in the hardest moments, we transform our lives and open the door to true freedom and inner peace. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone who might benefit. Until next time, stay elevated, stay conscious, and keep liberating your life. You can connect with me, Melinda Fletcher, at um, Sattva Wellness Center on Instagram or head to my website and check out my beautiful offerings. That's also sattvawellnesscenter.com. Sattva is spelled S-A-T-T-V-A.